Hey, it's Matt here. I want to talk today about the difference between uh, performing practice and practice to learn a piece because practicing for a performance is actually different than the type of practice you want to do when you learn a piece. And a lot of people don't know this. Uh, so this is a strategy I use in my own teaching, especially with students who have trouble uh, on stage, who tend to maybe fall apart a little bit on stage. But it's also something I use for myself uh, whenever I'm uh, practicing or getting ready for performance. So I want to talk about the difference between what goes on in the mind when you're practicing uh, for a a performance versus what goes on in the mind when you're practicing uh, to learn a piece because they're two separate things. So when you're learning a piece, the type of practice you're doing actually is engaging the analytical uh, part of the, the mind. You're really thinking quite a lot about how the, the piece ought to go, whether it's fingerings or you know the sound quality that you want um, and making a lot of judgments about it. So you're you're really uh, using a lot the tar part of your mind that involves words and talk and things like that. So whether it's what fingering should I use here or what chord is coming next or you know am I playing this phrase well or not or the way I want it to or not. There's just a lot of analytical uh, mind involvement and, and this is important. I mean you know to be a good musician or a good artist you really have to think about what you're doing because part of being a good artist is really analyzing things in depth and, and becoming very intimate with the piece that you're playing. However, when you go on stage or when you're in any sort of situation where you're playing through a piece for, for a person or you're a little bit on edge, uh, this part of the mind, this habit of thinking can really get in the way. And the reason is that when you're under the pressure of playing through a piece, uh, you really need to let your subconscious do most of the work. The conscious analytical mind has to take the role of the observer. In other words, it has to step back a little bit and basically as the subconscious is throwing up information about, you know, this is what's coming next or this is the next phrase, uh, the conscious mind has to sit there and basically kind of be going, okay, yeah, that's that's correct. Yes, yeah, you know, it's it, uh, yes is almost too strong of a word. It really just has to be kind of observing and monitoring, and this sort of observing mind can take some practice because if you've if you've been practicing for three, four, five months or whatever, uh, thinking what's next and how am I doing, it's really not a surprise that when you get on stage or when you're in any sort of high pressure situation or even moderate pressure situation, say in a piano lesson or, or playing for a friend, uh, that part of the mind is gonna continue to interject. So what you can do is you can practice getting yourself in sort of the zone where the conscious mind is thinking about things other than analyzing and judging. And the best way to do this is to simulate the, the performance situation. Now there are a lot of ways to do this. So for example, most uh, performing musicians or all performing musicians I guess that I know never go on stage uh, unless they've played through a piece many times for friends and uh, kind of given little mini recitals and things like that especially if it's a new piece that they they haven't performed before and the reason is they want to play through the entire piece and keep going no matter what and get a sense of where the trouble spots are in that piece and uh, get a sense of where the conscious mind is going to interject. So, you know, when you're in the practice room and the adrenaline's not pumping through your veins, it's not always easy to know where those trouble spots are going to be and where the conscious mind is going to sort of screw things up. But the second you're in a pressure, a high pressure situation, you're going to know, oh, okay, here at measure 20, I'm really not sure what's coming up next. And then my conscious mind kind of asks, what's next? And, um, you know, I don't, I don't know, and so then I just kind of freak out. And uh, by kind of replicating this high pressure situation before a performance and making yourself play from beginning to end of a piece, you'll really get a sense of what areas you need to work on in terms of uh, being aware that the conscious mind is maybe going to, to get a little uh, out of control there, and also just kind of go back to the drawing board and, and maybe practice things under tempo, you know, do some mental practice and all, all sorts of strategies that I discuss elsewhere. Um, 
Now, it can be a little bit daunting, especially if you don't perform too much, to play through something in front of friends. And also, you know, you're kind of at the mercy of when someone can come and watch you play. And so it can be quite a, quite a hassle. Um, and so if you want more practice doing this, what I always suggest people do is videotape themselves. Uh, you would be surprised how much just videotaping yourself can uh, put you a little bit on edge and sort of replicate in a very, very kind of more mild way the sort of thinking and mental habits and um, stress of playing in front of someone or playing in front of an audience. So what you can do is just take a video camera or anything and uh, put it on yourself and play through the piece from beginning to end and you'll get tons of great feedback that way. Now, not only will you learn how, where your trouble spots are, probably more importantly, you can start to observe your mind and how it works when you're playing through the piece. And what you wanna go for here is a mind that's focused on sound and artistic musical gesture as opposed to a mind that's focused on, am I gonna mess up? What's coming next? Um, am I playing well? What are people thinking of me? And all these other things that sort of your, this kind of your conscious engine of um, uh, self-judgment will start to, to, to generate. And learning how to get sort of in the zone where you've pulled your conscious mind back is a tremendous asset when you're in uh, a performance situation. So you can start to monitor that in front of a camera uh, or if there's a friend there watching you, you know, in that sort of situation. And you can actually train yourself to uh, pull away, to pull the mind away from those kind of uh, self-judgments or things that are interfering with the subconscious and pull it back to, I'm just listening, you know, I've really kind of stepped back and I'm just kind of um, taking this 10,000 foot view of what's going on and I'm letting my subconscious do most of the work. So you can really learn this mental habit with practice and you can actually get good at going between the analytical type of practice that you need when you're learning a piece and the non-analytical type of practice that you need when you're playing a piece through. Now, uh, one little tip here, um, in, if you're a teacher and you have students where things start to spiral out of control sometimes in performances, this is something you can tell them as well. Uh, there's a phenomenon that occurs on stage when you're thinking about what's coming up in a piece, and maybe it's like two seconds ahead, the conscious mind sort of says, what's up? You know, what's, what's the next beat? And the subconscious will kind of freak out a little bit and just say, I don't know. And that can be a really, really scary, uh, scary moment as a performer because if you don't know what's next, you start to focus on that and it starts to freak you out a little bit more. Now this all happens very, very quickly, but uh, you'd be surprised how, many, how quickly those thoughts can go when, when the adrenaline's going. And, uh, so what happens, unfortunately, is because you're fixated more and more on that spot that's coming up, you freak out more and more, and then it becomes a stumbling block. So if you've ever witnessed a situation where someone sort of starts to fall apart on stage, where they get so nervous, it's like they can't continue, that's probably what's going on. They start second guessing every single beat because the conscious mind is just in overdrive. Like what's coming next? Oh my gosh, you know, I have to protect myself in this situation. It's basically doing its job. Uh, you know, if you were being attacked by a lion or something in the wilderness, that's what you would want to happen. You would want to kind of be on the lookout constantly. But when you're playing the piano and you need that memory and that fine motor control and you really don't want uh, to be on the lookout, uh, it's not so helpful. So what you can do when you encounter that mental situation or what I sometimes will have students do is you can train yourself instead of thinking about that spot that's coming up to think ahead of that spot. In other words, to think uh, maybe to the next beat or to the next little fragment or phrase. And what happens if you train that as your habitual response is almost all the time, your subconscious will go ahead and play that spot because you've played it a million times. And even if it doesn't, when you get to that next phrase, 
your conscious and subconscious mind will line up. It's like you'll kind of anchor there and you can keep going. So in other words, what I often tell students is no matter what, you have to keep playing. You have to keep moving your fingers when you're doing this sort of run through or a performance because by, by moving, you, you keep the subconscious mind on track. The second you stop and you think about that problem area, you've given all the control to that analytical part of your conscious mind, which is already in overdrive. And so by doing that, uh, you really kind of have put a big stumbling block in the way and it's very, very hard to get past that. Uh, you know, you'll see people kind of freeze up and they'll get that deer in headlights thing going, or you'll have someone who goes back to a previous part in the piece and they kind of keep having a stumbling block. And even if they're not playing from memory, you can, you start looking at the music and thinking, gosh, have I ever seen this music before? Uh, so it's, it's quite amazing um, how that, uh, you can create that scenario for yourself. But if you can train your mind when you sense that coming up, when you sense that confusion or that blank spot coming up, if you can train your mind to jump ahead uh, and to keep moving, you'll be surprised that within a couple seconds you're right back on track. So uh, that's something that is helpful. Now, uh, one other thing I wanted to touch on, uh, the, the situation where you're kind of drawing your, your conscious mind back when you're playing is very similar to what you do in meditation. So for those of you who don't meditate, this is a good time to start. You know, in breath meditation, for example, uh, the second the conscious mind starts to uh, deflect or think about thoughts or, or, you know, get caught up and wound up in anxieties, you're drawing it back to the breath and you're just learning that concentration where you're not getting wrapped up in the analytical or the judgmental mind, but you're just kind of coming back to the breath. So I have found meditation practice really replicates quite a lot the mindset you need when you're you're actually performing. So if you don't do that as a regular habit, you might find it helpful. So those are a few things that might help you in performance. Um, for sure, make sure you're, you're playing through your pieces all the way through and start to learn the difference in mental habit between being in a practice room, learning a piece and performing a piece. And I think you'll find that it helps your playing quite a lot. So happy practice. I'll see you in the next video. If you liked this video, uh, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, it's either here or here. I'll put a link up or you can just link below the video. And uh, I'll see you next time.